what should I do next? So, um, so I've added the uh, things that we want. We've got the um, the combo box for uh, choosing our process. Uh, load up Visual Studio. Uh -huh. Add all controls. Yep. Uh, yeah, we need a timer. This timer is going to be used for um, for our event. So um, we're going to use this to every 10 milliseconds check. So make that 10 milliseconds. And by default, I believe that will be uh, disabled. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call this. Uh, what am I going to call it? I don't know. Uh, what did I call the other one? I called it process timer. So call it process timer. Process timer. Um, and that should be good enough, I believe. Um, so obviously, do a double click on it to get the tick event up. I can get rid of the toolbox now. Uh, so we've got a couple of events here now, and that's all right. Um, and I believe that is what we need so far for this. So we've added that. We've labeled the controls. Um, now what we're going to do is the uh, what I call pretty much the most difficult part of this tutorial, which is grabbing the memory addresses. Now we're going to use Cheat Engine for that. Okay. So um, after this part, once we get the uh, memory addresses, it's going to be a lot easier because it's just writing code. So it should be straightforward that. Um, so grabbing all memory addresses and play information is what we're going to be doing. Um, so what? Minimize this for now. Um, what we're going to need to do now is, oops, that was my videos. Okay, so what we do here is we um, we load Cheat Engine. Um, hopefully, you've got a version similar to mine because I've heard of some people complaining about the newer versions causing trouble with certain features. So hopefully, you've got something like mine. Mine is 6.1, as you can see here. Um, so uh, you want to load a salt cube. I've got. Um, I'm going to go to my files required folder and just run it. Uh, files required. Um, yeah, there's my files required folder. You guys should have something similar with maybe more or less files. I haven't decided if the files are okay yet. Um, so then you want to run this Windows batch file. Now, um, before you guys worry, you know, obviously you can have viruses in Windows batch files, whatever. If you've followed half of my tutorials, you should know by now that my um, all the material that I give you has been tested, you know pretty well and I do not give anyone viruses so obviously if you don't trust me or the work that I do then please don't continue with this um, but I believe I've put enough uh, videos out there to show you guys that I, I don't intend on giving anyone any stupid viruses so I'm just gonna run this um, and it runs that and then it calls the game for you so that, there we go now as you can see my game starts in windowed mode yours might not uh, it probably won't because it's how this goes so you want to go into settings Okay, settings, video settings, and I put mine to 800 by 600 resolution because I think that's you know a bit, little bit of my screen it doesn't take too much up. And then as you can see here, full screen, you can press enter. To, so make sure it's not got the cross on it. So this is only so it helps you out a bit. Uh, make sure it doesn't have the cross on it so you can um, easily um, have it in windowed mode. And then make sure you click apply. I'm not going to do that because I don't need to. Uh, no. Uh, okay. Alright, so um, this always comes with the game, so just ignore this, it doesn't really matter. And um, we're going to go here, we're going to go attach this to the game. I'm just going to load that again. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, obviously, excuse any freezage, but it's part of the whole Fraps experience. So we started a single player game. As you can see by default, it starts a game with just you, no one else, and that is perfect for what we need. Now, other games will, won't do that in most cases, so I think it's a good good thing to do it in this game because it gives us almost everything that we need. Uh, obviously, once you're experienced with this, you, you'll be able to do it in other games that are, for example, online or with other players, whatever. This is going to be an offline aimbot. But it's almost no different to a, an online aimbot. It's just to say that you need to find different addresses and maybe modify one or two very small things. So here I am, and um, I'm just going to uh, do self scan again until finding find rocks. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna scan for our health first thing. You guys should have done this with me by now. If you haven't, that's also fine. So we're gonna go for a hundred. I'm gonna I'm not gonna be too slow doing this because I'm gonna assume most of you have done this. Uh, so we'll look for 100 health and obviously that's our health there. I'm going to go a bit close as you can see that I threw a grenade I went a little bit close to it and I'm going to scan for 86 now. Next scan. And there you go. We get two addresses. Um, obviously if you're playing with a more difficult game uh, odds are you're not going to have a number of health. So I'm going to move that back to 100. Uh, go 1000 
and uh, there you go so you've modified it you know that's the right one so first thing we want to do is we need to get the pointer because as you can see these are black addresses which means they're dynamic and they're going to change every time uh, so you restart the game this address will no longer be the same so you can't code that we're going to go find out what access is this address yes agree with it and then you've got um, you gotta find another grenade, which I don't know where they are on this map. Crap, crap, crap. Ah, shit. So hopefully I'll find it. Oh, there you go, beautiful. So I'm just gonna grenade myself again. Try not to kill myself. Oops. Oops, I just killed myself. Crap. Um, yeah, hopefully that's the right one. So we double click here, and we need to open a notepad to create, to, to write down this information. So as you can see here, first thing, uh, that's our offset right there. So you see the red address, so right. F4, maybe right offset if you like. I'll do that. I, I don't us usually do it anymore. So, and then you see here the value of the pointer needed to find this address is probably 01CE. Actually, I just remind myself of something quickly uh, that I will forget if I don't do it. So I'm just gonna go here and zoom this in because I know you guys like to see this um, big styly. So that way I won't forget it for later. Um, so what you want to write is this address down here. 01E18 is mine, so make sure you write your own there. E18CE8. Do not write the one I'm writing. Oh crap, I don't like writing this in. E18. 01E18CE. Obviously, um, that's what we need to keep there. Obviously, I'd like to say quickly, guys, that I really appreciate all the. Um, all the feedback you guys have been giving me on all my videos um, that's the kind of stuff that keeps me going because you guys are really uh, nice on my tutorials and the ones that give me uh, bad feedback is also good uh, unless you're the uh, idiots that just like calling me names uh, because I do hacking but um, those of you that even give me bad feedback I thank you because um, it helps me on uh, improving my tutorials and it's great stuff um, for me so we've got these numbers uh, here and um, Hopefully that's let's, let's just make sure it's right. So one e eighteen c e eight. There, there you go. That's the number that I want. So close that. Get rid of that. And then what you want to do here is you want to go hex. You want to click hex here because we're going to scan for that address now. New scan, first scan, and there you go. You get a series of addresses. Now you don't know which one is the right one. Okay. So um, if if you don't find any of these to be right, then we'll have to do it again. But hopefully we'll find it first time. So you want to click add address manually and you want to add a pointer here so you want to say um, as you can see that's a, a, stat, uh, that, a static address so there's a chance that that is the one we're looking for so we want to put that number in so you want to go 4e as you can see these zeros before the first number are irrelevant you don't actually need to put them in so 4e uh, it's like putting 001 in your number it, it, it's still one it's not a zero zero one so 4e 4d b c uh, and we want to do the offset that we saw earlier, which is that one, F4. As you can see, we did it, and there's our address, and it points to 100. Now, let's say we modify this to 1000, and there you go, That we found the right address. Now, a way to make sure of this is by restarting your game, and then coming back and seeing, attaching Cheat Engine again, and seeing if that has changed. Now, I know for a fact that won't change, okay? Other games, it might change, but it's very unlikely. Um, so we do that. Now, uh, what we need to do is, uh, so we found the address, uh, yeah, we found the base address, we need to store kind of this pointer, so let's store this information here. So, um, so we've got this, uh, we can kind of delete this for now, I'm not going to delete it, because, I don't know, just, I'm just not going to for now, uh, so main, in case I need it, but I don't think we will, main player base equals, and we're going to put this bad boy here. Uh, and the offset, uh, the offset equals, uh, call it F4. Okay. So a way of seeing this, pointer uh, sheet engine. We're going to use this information later in our code. So something I want to try out. As you can see here, this points to address 01, 01E. It's not the same as this one. It's a bit different. So this points to, points to. This is something temporary, so it's not really important information but we'll need it to do something just now. 01E18DDC is what I've got. Uh, so I'm gonna get this address. And the way, if you know anything about structs or classes, you'll know that um, the way games do them, or if you know a bit about game development, games uh, tend to, uh, for example, you see the player's health, it'll be 
most of the time it will be near the other player's attributes. That means the X, Y, and Z coordinate. That that's um, the position they are on the map. So at the moment, uh, let's say I am at 10, 10, 10. Let's say I'm at 10 X coordinate, Y height coordinate, and Z, which is the depth coordinate. Uh, so that's where I am on the map, and that's how the game knows where you are because there's three floats. They most of the time they float uh, values. Um, and they're just your three corners of where you are in the game. So what we've got is we got this address where it points to and Chi Engine's got a very nice feature here. So it's got memory view uh, you can go here tools dissect data structures and if this confuses don't worry about it when I first saw this it confused me as hell as well but I've done it so many times since that it's almost natural so you want to paste that address the address it points to and you click here structure the find new structure put any name you like there doesn't matter say yes and then say ok and here you go so what this is doing is it's finding in memory what what this where um, what's near this address so as you can see here this is the address it points to now it's I think it's fair enough as you can see there's a lot of zeros here and if I do things like uh, do you see that here so as you can see we've through our health we've also found our ham ammo hopefully ammo <laughs> so you want to say 90 did you see that so we know for a fact that near our player's health there's also stored their ammo so um, we didn't need to look for ammo we just found health and a lot of the times you'll find this in games if you find a piece of information for the player you'll find everything else near him about him near him uh, near that piece of memory so as you can see there's a thousand which is my health and you've got 90 so through that we found the ammo and this is how you find no rec uh, how to make no recoil and things like that because for example when you shoot something will happen for example, if, see, do you, do you see this here? The 80 I'm pointing at my screen like you're able to see it. My guess is that's the amount of time you have to wait between shot. So if I remove that to zero, let's do that again. So it's 78 there. So if I, I remove this uh, and stick this address at zero, uh, offset to, uh, crap, I, I've got to freeze it if I want to do that. But what my guess is it will do, it will give us rapid fire, very rapid fire. Obviously this is a, a submachine gun. As you can see, oh, look. So if I get this address, what's the address at? So it's 78 offset, so I don't want to go off topic, I'll go majorly off topic if I show you guys how to do. But basically if you do this address plus 78 in memory, you'll be able to create uh, rapid fire. So this probably means it'll shoot like um, 30 rounds in about a second or something. Um, so probably less than that. And, and you can cut the reload time to nothing literally uh, nothing so it's just like quick reload anyways I'm going major off topic here like an idiot but all you need to know is their information is usually stored here so how do we find where they are positioned on the map we can look down we can look it so as you can see there's my name in game that's also part of my information it's probably a string saying the player's name so as you can see I'm moving and those variables are changing so um, what I'm guessing is that these are the speed at which the player runs. We can also modify them, whatever. So you can go down, we can go down. As you can see, there's not. This starts being useful, useless information here. So odds are is that um, our coordinates will be one of the first things on the player's mind. So I know for a fact that they are, but I'm trying to get you guys to see that. So we've got this number here, and. Um, so we're going to bring up Windows Calculator, so I've got a quick button here for it. And I always choose mine to be in programmer mode, because I'm a programmer, yo. Um, no, I'm joking. So I like to be this in programmer um, mode, because we can do maths uh, in hexadecimal and things like that. That way you don't have to sit down and do all the calculations yourself. So I'm going to put, click hex and put that hex number in there. So what I recommend you do is you do this minus a fairly nice number um, to find the rest of the corner. So let's say we do this uh, minus, let's say, C. C is, I believe, 13, 14. Yeah, C, D, E. No, C is 12, I believe. So we're going to do minus C equals. So it gives us this address, and that's saying, let's go a little way back in memory to see more things. So as you can see, uh, we still got the health here, and that wasn't really enough. Let's go back another four bytes, for example. So what's this, minus four? Do, 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 minus four, four bytes that is, and we get DCC. So let's do that. Let's go back. So let's. Uh, so there we go. Here we are. So just moving around. Uh, it's uh, just have a quick look. Sorry, I'm lifting the mic up quickly because I've got something. So C4. So here I am uh, moving around the map. I still don't see anything. Um, where's my health? Where's my health gone? There's my health still. Um, 
and yeah nothing really so uh, I've gone back a little bit in memory I'm gonna go back a bit more so C uh, let's put this one as a uh, C B 